Hey guys, welcome to the pond. We're on the homestead today. We're gonna do a kind of an interesting mix of surf and turf. This video is sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box. We'll get into using that a little bit later, but I wanna let you know what I have in store for today. As you can tell, the pond is a little bit on the muddy side. It's, uh, it silts up every time it rains and we've had a ton of rain this year. It just gets full of clay and mud. So we do have plans to dig this down a little bit deeper, but we're waiting for the tadpoles to hatch and move on into frogs into the forest. And we also have four trout in here. And I actually was lucky enough to catch one and my brother got it all on tape. Ooh, big fish on. Oh, these things got huge, dude. Look how big that thing is. We have a net. <laughs> oh. oh, dude, all that hard work, we made them fat. Look at that fish. That's a big fish. Hey, no kidding. They doubled in size since we put them in here. For That's sure. Crazy. Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> that was no, that doubled in size for sure since we put it in. 100%. There's actually uh, f two trout left. I caught another one another time. I didn't film it. So there's two left in here. We got to get them out before we can do anything else with the pond. And actually, I'm going to head up to the upper part of the property because there's uh, chickens and the chickens are about to go off to slaughter. And so I thought it would be pretty cool to fire up the smoker that we have out here and do a little bit of surf and turf. You guys have seen the cabin before built that from scratch. It's not getting a lot of use these days because we're actually expanding a little bit. We built the log cabin down there. I'll take you down there a little bit later. But you guys know the smokehouse. It had a little bit of an incident. Um, now what? I don't know. And so live and learn. Anyway, Kevin's redone this now, so it's got a steel door here and it's got a cement board in here. So what happened before was the fire shot up the base and it actually caught a lot of <laughs> the wood on fire in here. We got the firebox down here. It's actually got some wood in it already. But the idea would be to catch a trout from the pond and catch a chicken from up top there, which Kevin has been growing and uh, do a little bit of surf and turf. How about that? We can use a smoker and smoke a chicken. I have all day. I, it's, it's kind of a rest day for me. Kevin's got another little secret project going on. This one's on wheels and I haven't actually looked at it myself. It looks like there's a little door at the back here. And then if you look inside, it looks like <laughs> he's got something cool in the works and uh, I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to put a trailer hitch on there and, and hook it up to my little Toyota Corolla, but who knows? You get big. So my wife, Courtney, always gives me a care package of leftover things that don't quite work for human consumption anymore. There you go, piggies. There you go. <laughs> they don't seem to care where you put it. There you go. There's some leafy greens and some apples and carrots and whatever else we had. <laughs> you guys get big. Oh yeah, a little bit of carrots, a little bit of lettuce. So Kevin normally sends these out to get processed. About three bucks a bird, which is actually really reasonable. I've tried to pluck one of these guys before and they're a pain in the butt because it just takes a long time. But we have an actual processor, a plucker. And so we're trying this out. We're gonna do one today, just the one for the smoker. And then Kevin's gonna do the rest. There's 25 in here and it's enough meat for him for the whole year, basically. And this is how he feeds himself, meat birds. And uh, you can wait and let them get a little bit fatter, but then they stop being able to walk. And then it's just not healthy for them. They're, they're bred to grow really big, really fast. It's the end of the life for you. You? Are you done? You're all done eventually. So he says we gotta close the eyes. I don't I don't know what the- You gotta hold its face <laughs> and then slice its neck. We also have a killing cone. So basically what we're gonna do is gonna grab by the feet. We're gonna dunk it into the killing cone so its head comes through. And then you gotta cover the eyes. We well, you gotta hold its head. <laughs> we'll I... hold the head and then cut the neck? 
both, both, both sides of the, of the neck, the jugular or something like that. I'm more, th I'm thinking more like if you hold it by the feet and they take a baseball bat and you head it in the head. That's not the right way to do it. And then you put it in the killing cone and slice the snack. I think that it's obviously going to, you know. F this is kind of the, they, they electrocute them in the, in the actual <laughs> processing facility. Well, that's going to hurt worse than the baseball bat and maybe a little bit less than the killing cone. Well, we'll do it how they prescribe and I'll let you guys know how I feel about it after. <laughs> I, I've already kind of queasy about this whole process. Yeah, he won't even do it. So you're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to do it, and you can do the other 24 birds, I guess. Did you count them? No, I was just, I was figuring there was 25. Oh, there's 30. 30. So well, there you go. We lost two, I think. Okay. Well, you're gonna lose a lot more after this process. They're gonna be all in the freezer. That's right. Hopefully your plucker works, because I can tell you what, it's not worth three bucks to do it by hand. So what are you gonna do? Just grab it by the feet and uh, run over. Yeah, once you tilt them upside down, they kind of calm down. Go we'll get this one. This one's already out. That's my laying hen. <laughs> You're supposed to cut both sides of his head. Neck. Okay. Don't cut his head off. You just go to the bone. No. Well. Yeah, I gotta go to the just, bone. You're just supposed to slice it. No, that's supposed to go to the bone. You're supposed to. Oh. Uh. <laughs> just put it in and see what happens. <laughs> the, the cone calms them down. Because they're upside down and the blood flows down to their head. You guys know how that goes if you ever hang yourself upside down. The head's supposed to come through there. Wow. So you gotta hold his head and then pull the feathers back. Do it. Oh. <laughs> Grab his head. <laughs> I'm holding his feet. The head keeps coming back up. Oh, you gotta hold his head. <laughs> oh man. The head keeps going up. Here, I'll push it down. It's gonna peck me. Just grab his head, it's not gonna peck you. You gotta hold it, hold it, cover its eyes. There you go. And now pull the feathers down. Pull. Ready? Well, you got both sides. Ready? Yeah. No, that was that was worse than hunting. Oh, that gave me a weird feeling in my stomach. And the idea, of course, is to keep the heart beating so that it draws all the blood out. It's the same thing what you do when you bleed a fish. I didn't get any on my shirt, so that's pretty clean. Killing cone for the win. That's just a traffic cone with the bottom cut out, if you're curious. This is the plucker. It's got a bunch of pretty firm nipples like things in the bottom or on the sides, I guess. And the bottom, I think, rotates. Uh, Kevin had to fire it up a little bit earlier. And I guess you just throw the chicken in there and then uh, I don't know where everything goes. And so I'm kind of learning this as I am. This is like the modern version of primitive survival. Kevin's got a hot water jug here. It's uh doesn't look like just, just below boiling point because you don't actually want to cook the chicken when you put it in there. You just want to loosen the feathers. So he's gonna give that a dunk, and then I guess we throw that in the plucker, ready? and we see what happens. Yeah, I'm ready, go for it. So he's gonna give that a, a soak, and uh, you want it to get all the way underneath the feathers and everything, and then it's probably, you know, it's like just below the point where it's scalding. Give that a minute. I think you're only supposed to leave it in about 60 seconds or something like that, no longer than that, and after that it just gets worse. Here, Kevin fired up the plucker machine. He's got a little bit of water going through there. That's painfully efficient. I don't know, maybe, is that a good? That was pretty efficient, effective. Just got a few a few strays, maybe if you left it in there a little bit longer, it would work. Are you, you happy with the fat mass on there? I think they were fatter before. You're gonna let them go a little bit longer or that's that's it? That's it, that's the, that's the end. So was that worth saving three bucks for? Well, we're not even done yet. <laughs> no, we gotta take the innards out. Probably needs a little bit more of a bath. Tomorrow so. is the big day for the, all the chickens. This is our <laughs> trial run. Are you doing the rest of them? Yes. Are you going to be able to handle it? Sure. <laughs> I say I told him after he does about ten of them, he'll he'll be like whatever. <laughs> that sick feeling in your stomach will go away. You guys got chicken splatter on you. At the risk of smoothing it out, smearing it around, I'll try to clean it off a little bit. All right, we got it just in a quick ice bath there to keep it cool because it's hot today. Okay, so that's the sternum there. 
okay when you stop feeling any anything that's the end of the sternum you got that yep pay attention okay so sternum and then when you stop up here is the neck okay so you don't want to cut through there because that's your, that's what you're eating is the breast here okay so where you're going to stop there is the bottom so we'll just cut there okay so you're through and we don't want to this this stuff you're going to eat that's the skin that's the good stuff so we're just going to separate a little bit and then you're going to have to separate it from the butt down here so i'm going to make a slit down around the butt well that didn't quite go as planned it got a little a little graphic a little fast needless to say i have uh covered videos on this before and you could join the lumber section although it's not super active i do have some tutorials there on how to process small game it's the same thing essentially I just showed Kevin how I reached up and grabbed it from the esophagus up. You do want to cut the esophagus at the top. So that's separate and then work away the connective tissue just with your finger. And then once you got separated at the back end, then you can just kind of pull it all the way through gently. So the smoke comes out down here through underneath back over here. So we light the fire. It should start shooting some smoke up. See if we got any smoke. Oh yeah, she's smoking. There we go, we got smoke. Just like that, we got our smoke coming out this end. We got some smoke coming out with that end, but we can close that gate up and that'll direct more smoke up here. Whew. Ugh. I don't know if that's the right smoke. We just kind of put in what was laying around. We have some apple wood. This is all apple wood. It's, it's uh, probably a little bit on the dry side now but uh, it'll work, I think, for our purposes. As long as we don't put too much in there at once, we shouldn't burn the place down. Spatchcocked it. So I just cut down the middle here, rib cage, that'll increase the surface area. And then we just added a bunch of olive oil and some spices. I always gotta throw it in there. We're talking about between four and six hours, because we can only get the thing up to about 200 degrees. It's going to be a slow cook you can do this in your oven too same kind of idea it's not going to have the smoke effect due to your barbecue just on super low temperature it's hard to control the temperature this one we got a gauge here what do we get 234 that's not too bad getting very technical in here oh that is hot i don't know if i'm gonna you said i was gonna be able to throw it in there <laughs> like i'm gonna be able to throw it in there we're throwing up in the rack well i want it low it's right too bad the rack I mean, we want to, oh the rock is way too hot dude oh. way too hot all right let's get some gloves oh we need some gloves Oh, there's smoke in here. Oh, that looks beautiful. Check that out. The presentation, maybe we have the feet on there still to make you still realize that it came from field fork. Ow, that's still hot. What are you talking about? It's not that hot. It's pretty hot. It's <laughs> burning my hands. Top? Uh, top. Top right yeah. Oh, my smoking my eyes. Ow. Ow. I'll drop the chicken. <laughs> Stuff far enough in. Yeah, I know, but I'm smoking my eyes out. Stick it in there. Whew. That's it. That's as far as it goes. That fits then. All right, what are we at? It's dropped to 130 degrees already. So we better lock this door up. Cherry wood? Sure. And you're not supposed to smoke it. Soak it. So you're not supposed to soak no. it. Is Inter this... Internet says don't soak it. Yeah. People would probably disagree with that, but some people that maybe never smoked would disagree with that. They also said when you smoke, you're not supposed to say sea smoke. Ouch! Dang it! That's freaking hot. Why is everything hot here? We're smoking stuff. <laughs> oh jeez. I don't think it needs any more wood. We need some gloves. Is what we need around here. Well, you wouldn't put your hands in the gloves. They're full of chicken. <laughs> Ow! That hurts. These are just basically oven racks. They work perfectly. They're really good camp grills too. So if you guys aren't sure if you want a, what you want for like a budget camp grill, this is a barbecue one. This is really heavy, but these ones aren't, uh, they aren't nearly as heavy. And you can actually take a hacksaw and make them at whatever shape that you want, and then take a file and blunt off the edges if you want a really inexpensive portable camp grill, camping grill. I did mention at the beginning that this video is sponsored by Mystery Tack Box. Use my code Beardsman. That'll get your first box for as little as 10 bucks and let me tell you it's already a good deal because you're gonna get all your tackle for basically uh half the price or more than what you would pay retail 
So what they do is they give you, it's a mystery. They don't, you don't know what you're gonna get, but you're gonna get all the kind of latest tackle and you can try out new gear. This is the best way to do it, especially if you're just starting out fishing or you've been fishing for a long time, to be honest, because you kind of lose track of all the new innovations and they have all kinds of different tackle for all kinds of different fish. You can fish for panfish, uh, catfish, of course, bass, walleye, pike, uh, musky, anyway, everything, the whole thing. Hey, we got a chorus of frogs welcoming me here. They want me to catch this fish just as bad as you guys want to catch the fish just as bad as I want to catch a fish myself. So let's get some of this tackle working. I'm not sure if the water clarity is going to be conducive for a spinner. And we only got two feet of water to work with, so we might have to dig some worms. But I'm curious to see if they'll come up and smack one of the lures that we get from the mystery tackle box. I'm always a sucker for these little spinners here. It's a pretty typical trout one. So we've got a couple to pick from. We've got a Strike Pro tournament grade spinner. It's got a little bit of a tail on there. We'll drag that through in a couple casts. If that doesn't work, we can always add a worm to it. It's always a good trick. And we got some fireballs too. I don't know if putting that on a spinner would work, but uh, just a little bit of flavor too. Like we only work on two feet of water and we can only drag it so far. All right, we got the spinner on here and we got a, a very small amount of water to work with. We got about two feet in the middle and, and the rest of it's kind of shallow. So our strike zone is super tight here, but <laughs> we'll see. And I know there's two fish left. Oh, a strike already. I was 100% a flash. I 100% saw a fish right in the middle there. Again, this is going to be super tricky. See if we can't get him to go again. Oh, that was pretty cool. First cast. The trick is we have little water to work with. That strike zone is just so small. Oh, come on. We just can't get the fish to follow for a long time. It's just got to either grab it or it goes by and it's out of the zone. The fish don't like to come to the edges. Let's try a longer drag through here. Come on, right there, right there, right there, right there. Oh, there it is. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, did he wrap me up? Oh, shoot. He wrapped me up in the pump. We gotta get out of the pump. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, you see him stirring up the mud? Oh, I got free. Oh, I lost him. I can't believe that. Look at the mud kicked up there. Oh, I had him in the pump. Can you, look at that. That's insane. Oh, I can't believe that. You guys see the mud all kicked up in there? That's crazy. Ah, you see that pump over there, the aeration system. Well, he looped around there in the fight and that kicked up a ton of mud too. Ah, <laughs> I can't believe that, man. That was just crazy. <laughs> I think when they came up with the term shooting fish in a barrel, catching fish in a barrel, this is actually more challenging. Oh, I doubt that fish is gonna strike again. But we know there's another one, so there's still a chance. We may have to rest it. Oh, that, was, that was exciting. Well, that was a, another couple dozen casts and nothing came to grab it. So, you know. I wasn't expecting it to just grab it right away. Oftentimes upon the size, even if you catch one fish, you were not likely to catch another fish until it's rested up. So we'll, go, we'll dig, up, dig up some worms and uh, we'll try to see if it'll grab live bait off the bottom. And if it won't do that, then we'll just rest it because we're, we're gonna be here for a bunch of hours cooking that chicken anyway. So we got some time. Today's just about relaxing for me. Oh man, that's working absolutely perfectly. Just little bits of grease dripping every once in a while. I hear that landing down below. Well, there's a drip tray there, so we're not going to get fire shooting up anymore. That was the cause of the problem before. Kevin was actually cooking a brisket in here overnight. 
and the idea was just to slow cook it just like we've been doing with the chicken here you see the temperature dropped 184 it was about 240 or something before we opened the door well, i haven't been on top of everything this year as far as picking worms usually i'll pick worms a couple times hey there's another shovel here <laughs> i guess i could dig there i'm trying to find a spot where maybe there's a log that's kind of touching the soil maybe there might be some worms underneath it already just looking for little red ones here that's about all you're going to find you're not going to find the big dew worms here but if we get enough of these and we add them all together it'll make up a good bunch of worm there's another one that's a bigger one there's a good sized one it's about as big as they get dude i found an absolutely massive one that is one of the biggest ones i've ever seen fortunately i kind of cut them in half but that's okay it won't matter for bait look at that guy compared to the other ones down in there <laughs> huge well we're gonna go back to my kind of favorite here it's kind of weird to put a hook on a swivel like that but hear me out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread that worm up use a fat one get the big fat one and uh, you see the swivel there well the swivel is gonna help us in this case even though you think of just being lazy and then what you can do is you're gonna pull it up up through the swivel like that and the swivel is actually going to provide some weight for us and help it sink and then the fish when it grabs it, this is going to grab the whole thing it doesn't care if there's actually a swivel in there with that much worm so this uh using live bait for trout is actually a good idea because the fish will play with it a lot more and end up swallowing it which is what we want because we want to take this fish out we're not doing catch and release and we can kind of walk it on the bottom hopefully walk it right in front of the fish Oh, I think I got a bite there. See that line coming out on its own? That's a good sign. I think I got one on. Just gonna make sure he swallows a little bit here. Keep an eye on the line here. If the line starts to move too much, we can set the hook. I think we can probably set it pretty soon here. That fish hasn't dropped it. Oh, it's still there. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. Oh, 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 oh. Where are we going to land this? I think we're just going to hand bomb it up. Oh, boy. Oh, these guys got so much power. Okay, let's just beach them. We're going to beach them. That's the safest way. There we go. Fish number three out of this pond. So we're three for four so far. Oh, look at that. Anybody who thought this trout pond wasn't gonna work. Oh, well, if you guys thought this trout pond wouldn't survive. Now, granted, I wouldn't let this pond go for say like another month. We're getting into July now. Whoa, <laughs> got some life left in them. Now, we better dispatch this guy here and uh, We'll throw them in the smoker. We'll have a delicious surf and turf. Whoa, 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 okay. We'll bleed them out. Some better quality meat. Have you guys ever seen that? <laughs> it's the heart still beating the heart actually has a pacemaker it's just stopped now it ran out of energy the heart has a pacemaker in it which you guys know from anybody's having a heart problems they put a new pacemaker in the pacemaker controls the rate at which the heart beats but if you get a smaller fish like a pan fish and you put it in water salt water or whatever it'll beat for a couple hours it's kind of neat to see how's that look Ooh, she's hot and smoky in there. Look at that. <laughs> How does that look for a chicken? We got surf and turf. There we go. Surf and turf. That chicken's turning nice and brown. I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh, turning a nice golden color on the top. And imagine the bottom's cooking pretty good. It's starting to tender up a little bit. It's probably got a little bit left to go. That fish will definitely be cooked faster than the chicken, so we can probably eat it a lot sooner. But I'll see if I can't catch that other fish. 
that's the smaller one. The one I had on before was definitely much bigger and it's probably gonna have to rest maybe a couple hours. So that might be one we take home and eat for later, if I can catch it today. If not, it's gonna have to stay on the pond and live another day. There's a bit of an update. The other pond that I used to have, the first pond that I don't have anymore, long story about that one. They, uh, word of mouth, Kevin's been talking to them and they, they lost a lot of fish this past year, uh, last year. Mark had uh, got his own fish and put them in there and a lot of them died off. I don't know why. I have obviously haven't been over there to monitor what's going on, but the pond was very long and very shallow. And so what probably happened was the water just heated up again and they do stir it because they swim in it. So it wasn't the ideal pond to be doing that sort of thing, but there's definitely a lot more water than here. But the other pond, the second pond, which I did an update on before, it's doing good, those fish are thriving there. There's no real reason for me to go over there. The owner's been feeding them regularly, so. Oh, resting that fish a little bit. That's a technique you can use just about anywhere. You got a pressured fish, you just wait a little bit and then it'll start to get active again. It can't outweigh you forever. Eventually it's gotta get back into feeding mode. I've got a trail camera that I've been neglecting to go visit just because the mosquitoes have been so bad back here. We'll go check it, see what's going on. Coming up on my deer stand. My deer stand's just over here. It's blended in pretty good. Got a lot of activity here. I got a new shotgun too. New 20 gauge Browning shotgun they sent me. I said, listen, my shotgun's no good. You wanna send me a cool shotgun I can try out? Raccoon, 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 raccoon. This raccoons. Man, we gotta get rid of some of these raccoons. Raccoon. Oh, there's a deer. Oh, got freaked out again. See, I don't know what it is. Oh, there's another deer. That one walked through no problem. And another deer. All does. Looks like no antlers so far. Coming through here all hours of the day. I did uh, do a little bit of cleaning up around here so that the deer would kind of use this as a funnel. And it seems to be working. Lots of raccoon activity though. Nice to see a little buck or something. Oh my god, that looks delicious. That chicken kind of lined up a little bit better. We might have get it to land, to land that chicken juice onto the fish. Killing two birds with one stone, so to speak. It is holding about 200 degrees, so that's about ideal. We'll head over here. You following me? Alright, close, right, close it up. It's a good idea. We'll keep that chicken cooking. Have a bite of this fish. Look how good that fish looks. Don's gonna have a bite. You got the chicken drippings on there. Oh nice. <laughs> It'll be extra extra greasy. That's delicious. That doesn't taste fishy at all actually. No. That's way better than that lamprey. <laughs> God, this is very, very good. Well, help yourself, Don, dig in. There's one more in the pond still. Does that, does that mean it's cooked? It flakes away. Wow, it's pretty good. You burn your face, Bean. You burn your face. Wasn't that hot? Is it tasty? You don't want that? No. You don't like fish? Bean's not a fan of fish. That is perfect fish. All right, so Don, Don's actually a good sport. Kevin doesn't want to have anything to do with this. So the eye, I think it, the eye part itself is not, it's whatever, it's not going to taste bad, but there's a spot behind the eye. I think it's like a chunk of fat. Oh, okay. So you like suck it like you're trying to like suck through a straw hard, really hard, harder than that. Just, just there, harder. Do you get it? There. <laughs> you taste that? It's really good. Isn't it just, <laughs> isn't it, isn't it just yeah. like a shot, it's a shot of like, flavor it's, yeah it's like almost like um that nice fat you get on the pork chop yeah yeah like it's gristle but it's not gristly <laughs> i don't know why people don't know that you didn't get it yet did you get that time almost yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hit it you probably that's there's, the eye, that's the, the eyeball eye. there's show, the eyeball. show them that that's kind of cool that's like uh, it's hard it's hard it's like, like a, a marble yeah it's hard like a little bead that's weird. and you can actually dry it out and make jewelry out of it yeah. No, it's, it's really tasty. Uh, 
the actual. You gotta do the last one. <laughs> I'm not eating the other. Well, you can't now, but maybe if I catch the other one, you can do it. No, I think I got it all. <laughs> <laughs> if you do it right, it's just like. And yeah. It just, it I just... think I did the first one right. <laughs> yeah, you did. And then the second this one. This one, I think, was a little burnt. But anyways, yeah, it's. <laughs> it's a shot of flavor. <laughs> in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> have to come back some other time after this guy's rested up and then maybe he'll bite we gotta pull him out before we can dig the pond out he just won't do it we got him hooked once we had our chance it's greasy anyway we'll get this pulled out kevin's got gloves on let him take him out we'll have a look at it inspect it it looks very smoky and golden as you would maybe expect or maybe not expect look how good that looks that looks like restaurant quality rotisserie chicken if you don't, better than that actually. I have a hunch that's gonna be pretty good. I don't know if it's gonna be cooked all the way through or not because this is kind of experimental whether or not you need to, you know, pay more attention to it or not, but it looks the part. I would say it looks cooked, whether it's cooked all the way to the center, I don't know. Of course, the smoking instructions I had did not spatchcock the bird. And so we created a lot more surface area by opening it up. So. My guess is it's probably cooked all the way through. It'd be a good test to see if it pulls apart, and it does. Look at that wing just pulls right apart. No problem. It's got a really good flavor. It's got lots of fat in there. Oh, the leg just breaks right off. That's caveman food. Leaking grease everywhere. Ooh, that's spicy. Very wadobo -y. That's really good, Ben. I'd say it's probably cooked all the way through. It breaks apart and it's cooked. Cooked in the smoker. Who knew? Kevin had his doubts, but I'm confident that's uh, really nicely cooked. You can see, I wouldn't be fooled by the pink there, but it's, um, I think it's cooked all the way through. It's good. That's a success. Oh, look at that right there. That's good stuff. No, this oh, is it's a piece of meat. It's a piece of meat. <laughs> a little chewy. <laughs> it's a little chewy. Very nice flavor. Yeah, really good. But I'm surprised that that chicken cooked all the way through at 200 degrees. It just takes a long time. So if you're gonna do something like that, just make sure you have lots of time to do it. If you watch the whole video, right full stop. Check out Mystery Tackle Box, the sponsor for this video. And if you wrote if you wrote, if you watch the video all the way through, right, full stop.